spirit of the Lord hath set me free, free to walk in the path of love, free to run on the mountains, free to leap on the walls of unbelief. The spirit of the Lord. People of the fellowship come to God in different ways. Dr. Bob Eckert had known Graham Polkingham as far back as medical school, and later followed his friend into a new baptism. Graham visited us and explained to me and my family what had happened to him in just the past few weeks in his life. And he didn't have any kind of a, a doctrinal explanation of what had happened, that he had been baptized with the Spirit, and, and his new, deeper, uh, and more powerful walk with the Lord. Uh, he, he had nothing except a testimony. He did, could tell me what happened, and over a period of about two hours that he talked and uh, relating the past few weeks, uh, the first hour I laughed at him and explained to him how they were ecological uh, situation with him, some of them problems, some of them perhaps not problems, uh, and uh, and just laughed at him in a good-natured way. And during the last hour, uh, I knew that it was real, and that this was, uh, even though I didn't know I had been searching for any more of God in my life than I than I had already had, but this is what I wanted, and I wanted it uh, not more than anything else. I didn't want the Lord to become the main thing in my life, but that's all I wanted. Another Episcopalian who had recently received the baptism of the Spirit, Jerry Barker, joined the Church of the Redeemer, bringing his family and law practice yeah. from Galveston to Houston. The practice of law as a part of uh, the church community uh, means that my involvement in this office and with clients is, is based upon our total life uh, uh, lived unto the Lord and uh, as service uh, to, to the Lord's service and so uh, for that reason uh, we seek in this office as over in the medical clinic to to relate to uh, clients uh, in terms of serving and ministering to the whole man uh, a lot of our patients we pray with they ask for prayer uh, a number of people come here from even out of town uh, because they know they can be ministered to in a full way uh, in a medical clinic. Dr. Eckert operates a community-owned medical clinic in the predominantly black fourth ward. They send no bills, but ask people to pay what they can. I don't regard it to be productive from the point of view of Christian ministry. If you are just a lawyer, or just a doctor, or just a teacher, or just an engineer, if your profession is indeed your calling, that is to say, if, if in Christ that's where you belong, then in Christ you'll receive grace to show forth his life in some way, maybe not verbally, but you will show forth the life of Christ in your profession if that's really where he wants you to be, and that's what I call being productive. There's another fairly new Redeemer ministry on North Main Street, down beside the railroad yards of Houston. The Way In is the name of the coffee house, and it's a, a ministry of um, our local body of Christ, uh, the, the Church of the Redeemer. Uh, the word ministry really is just a, a term for a service.
Mike Kennedy is the manager of the way in. Although I came before the coffee house was set up, I was part of the of the, of the hip community, and the the drug culture, and uh, after spending several years deep deep in the in in the drug scene, uh, I began to to realize that that I was uh, really lacking something. You know, I wasn't able to relate to people and. Love people or to accept love from people, and I didn't think anyone loved me indeed. And um, through a friend, I, I fell in with the people at the Church of the Redeemer and um, found out what, what the love of Christ was all about. The coffee house stages amateur playlets and lots of music for its young patrons. All of it fundamentally religious. The only things sold are soft drinks and the recordings of their singing group, The Keyhole. Most of the songs are original with the fellowship. Some of them received spontaneously from God. here live in the building behind the coffee house. Al Roundtree is an ordained minister but works for the federal OEO and Marty Keyes is a college student. None of us are physically related to each other. The Lord seems to have done that purposely. Uh, the Lord is teaching us to, uh, to live out the, the meaning of God's family, what it means to be related to one another by the Holy Spirit instead of my blood kinship. My experience of dorm life was sort of like a lot of people who were alone living in the same building. And here the, the main purpose of life is to, to share a life together. And that means to be open to, to share your thoughts and feelings with other people. Each household in the fellowship has a, um, a main purpose and, and mission outside of itself some function that primary function it it uh, performs within the scheme of things here and the function of our household is to support what goes on in the coffee house we help keep up the grounds and we we, we serve uh, uh, most of us on the coffee house staff and and we pray a lot it's quite different from living in a place where you're constantly competing with people and sort of trying to, to guard yourself from other people's intrusions on your life. We meet in the morning at 6.30 uh, for prayer and sharing together to be sure everyone's up and uh, full of joy. And if, if a person isn't, well, then we, we all we face one another in a room and we we try to find out what's wrong with the person who might be ailing spiritually. We eat together and then we go off, most of us, to work in the world. Some few of us stay here and maintain the household. We haven't found a need for rules about things like drinking and smoking and drugs because most of us have come here in realization that those things haven't filled our needs and have come looking for something real that will. We keep in pretty close touch with each other. Uh, we have to because um, Satan, the devil, is just eager to insert or insinuate some division within a household like this or any of our households. And most of the rules that we do have are ones that, as Paul says, just to live by the rule of love, which involves such things as being quiet after a certain time in the evening so that people who need to study can study and people who need to sleep can sleep. There's such a fullness of love among us together that to go off uh, in pairs is uh, you're, you're missing a great deal if you go off in pairs because you uh, there's such a variety and a and a depth of love together uh, in threes and fours and tens and twenties and uh, you you might miss what the Lord might might be doing. I got married about six months ago and they give you. 
<laughs> yeah, they give you here a, a six months or so grace period. It, you know, it just depends where you, you can live with your bride by yourself. And um, my time's just about up, and I'm I can't wait. You know, and neither, neither can my bride. You know. you know, when you begin to see the manifestation of miraculous gifts in your own life, you're at times tempted to think you're just a little bit queer. And if your family and neighbors also think you're a little bit queer, then you might back off a little bit, you know. But if you have a fellowship with people who think the same way and who can encourage you, then your boldness might stick. And... This strong emphasis on the group doesn't discourage a wide range of individual talents. 